crazy bright but we'll get there all right hello beautiful humans what Kenny up palantano here at palantano on all this stuff here with elemental of the kin of merlin here to talk to you about a little thing called cult dow how you doing today bro fucking good doing great hard to be doing bad in the sunshine down in mexico when it's a popsicle in the u.s up north so <laughs> You know what I mean? But we've been having a great time down here at the Greater Reset, doing all kinds of different shenanigans that we love to do. But the talk of the town has been cult doubt and Monero, but to a bigger extent, cult doubt. And that's mainly because of my main man, Kenny, here. Uh, so just to get people caught up to speed, because like I was saying earlier, I feel like a lot of people that I'm personally going to show this video to is going to be coming from a what do you mean cult now? What is cult? God, I'm not trying to join a cult here. Like, you know, maybe just explain a little bit about what cult now is exactly, where it comes from, and kind of the the platform itself. Yeah. So, so cult now, so first off, a DAO, a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, is a structure that's kind of coming about through the crypto open source revolution. It's a way to organize uh, in that's uh, uh, more democratic, I guess, using democratic in a good sense, when not in a status sense, but in the sense of like everybody has a voice. So cult DAO, uh, the name cult is was chosen kind of specifically for that like memeiness, that memeness of it. Uh, it's got a, a mask as the logo that's very much based on the V for Vendetta, like the Guy Fox mask, and it's created as a revolutionary tool. The whole point of it is to fund projects that are pushing for decentralization and liberation. So it's a lot of like privacy projects. It's been involved with the Dutch farmers protest. It funded anonymous, it's fun, you know, all sorts of things from crypto to, to real world and in between that are, yeah, working for the revolution. Um, yeah, the cult, yeah, it's just, it, you know, meme coins get attention. People want to, like, it's memorable. It's nobody else, there's nothing else like cult. Right. So, and everybody's in a cult. It's an interesting, it's like that reflection too of like society is a cult. Yeah, society, well, I mean, and this society uh, like that has swept the globe at this point is like a death cult, but, you know, around like controlling people, right. abusing it's, people. and It's kind of the play on words with that because like Wall Street is the real cult. So it's like, wait, it's the cult now. But anyway, uh, I think, uh, you know, as we're going into talking about the, uh, how the actual like functionality of the platform works. Uh, I, I, when you first explained it to me, I, the first thought that came to mind, so it's like kind of a decentralized uh, crowdfunding, like sort of like uh, GoFundMe or something like that, but much more organized and structured in a very specific manner, uh, but on the blockchain. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's more, so it's more like a, a venture capital fund. Mm, where, right. it's, so it's like, there's the pool of funds, there's the treasury. The treasury is filled by the taxes on any cult transactions. Every transaction by sell, sends, they pay 0.4% of their cult to the treasury. And then with the, the many, which is everyone who's voting, uh, or everyone who has staked cult, and they, they can vote with it uh, when there's proposals, the many vote on a proposal. If they get a yes, then the funds come out of the treasury. It's 15.5 uh, Ethereum worth of cult is released. Two and a half Ethereum of that, so currently, what is that, like 6,000, 7,000 bucks, something like that, mm -hmm. 6,000 bucks. When, it, when we pay out a proposal, currently $6,000 worth of cult, instantly burnt from the supply. Right. It's destroyed forever. And then the rest goes to the project. And yeah, so the funding is, is mostly in like seed funding things and then really strategic partnerships and then some, uh, some sponsorships and donations here and there for really aligned things. But it's this beautiful, uh, dual like check and balance kind of thing with there's the many the voters mm -hmm. so that's everybody that's staking cult except for the top 50 stakers the top 50 right. stakers are the guardians and the guardians are the ones that can put proposals on the chain where then the many can vote on the proposals and obviously anybody can theoretically raise the funds to get a guardian bag mm -hmm. it's all you know it's it's a whole thing but that positioning is really mm -hmm. beautiful in the, yeah. in the balance that it gives. I really like uh, experimental, like new types of governance like this, because even with something like this, separating those two powers and making the many that has 
maybe in some some of them little or at least a lot less than the people that are actually doing the proposals saying whether these proposals are good or not is a great way to make sure that you know there's proposals that actually mean something and that matter to people involved with the community um, as opposed to you know other systems where people can control both sides of that yeah. and uh, that's a pretty common thing actually but then you know there's a couple things to get into with what you were saying there you we were also talking about the burning of it so let's get into the tokenomics a little bit I mean, because, you know, and there's also a second point we'll come back to. So the bigger proposals are all done in the cult ecosystem. And it has to be for how much Ethereum did you say again? 13 Ethereum is what's released. 13 the actual proposal. And then Ethereum. Two and a half is burned. Right. Uh, but then if for smaller proposals, there's this other thing called Revolt uh, that's on the cult DAO or a sub DAO. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sub DAO yeah, of cult. It's a sub DAO. Right. But we'll get into that in a second. But let's uh, talk and talk about the uh, tokenomics and and the deflationary model as well as the burning factors. Yeah, because there's more than one. <laughs> yeah. So, a lot, most of you are probably familiar with the idea of inflationary currency, inflationary tokens, whatever. You know, things like the U.S. dollar, US all dollar these gonna... all these centralized currencies. <laughs> they're infinitely inflationary uh -huh. with no controls. They can just do it whenever they want. They can up it by however much they want. So then things like Bitcoin are like, hey, we're an alternative to that. We're, you know, controlled inflation. It's mathematical inflation. It decreases over time. Every four years, the amount being inflated gets cut in half. Well, currently, we're looking at like a quarter of a million dollars worth of Bitcoin being minted every 10 minutes. That sounds like hyperinflation to me. Yeah. That seems insane. Uh, other tokens that have inflation are doing better. You know, Monero is less, but that's mostly just because the price of Monero is less. It has almost the same inflation curve as Bitcoin did. So, yeah, deflationary tokens, though. You may have heard of some. You may not have heard of one ever before. Uh, certainly, there's no, like, money out there, unless we just count, like, gold and silver, I would maybe, say there's no, or, like, mainstream yeah, there's, cur world there's, currencies yeah, there's no, that, we know, that I know of, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so... Two right. years ago, almost to the day, we're like coming up on on Call Dow's birthday right now. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple days away. Um, two years ago, when Call Dow launched, all almost seven trillion tokens were there at launch in the liquidity pool to be purchased and moved around and stuff. Since then, they've disappeared slowly, little chunks, right? Uh, not all of them got sold initially, but what was remaining got burnt from the, like, the initial sale. Um, there's been, you know, like last month there was like I think $20,000 in burns maybe. Uh, there's, you know, there's burns every time that proposals pay back. All right. And with the burns, if you don't get the reference, uh, you know, it's like burning paper money is kind of what it's, what it's saying, but it's permanently removing it from circulation. So you send these things to what's called the dead wallet or the right. null wallet, which no one anywhere in the world has the while, keys for. Well, no more is going to be printed either. Yeah, yeah so there will there's never just be less more and less of them always. And pretty much everything you do on the in the cult ecosystem, at least thus far, burns cult. Yeah. Whether it's a fee that you're paying, it's getting burnt. See, a lot of times you're paying fees it, like to move crypto around and stuff like that. That's not getting burnt. That's getting like reinserted back into the e ecosystem in someone else's hands as on, mostly on inflationary models. Whereas this one's pretty much the mirrored opposite of that. Yeah. So super dope. Um, what was the other thing about that I was gonna ask? Uh, oh, uh, I think a lot of this too is like, it's not just the deflationary model. It's not just, it's not just the burning of all this stuff, but it's also, I feel like why this is such a good investment is because it's a secure and safe investment. And I mean that for many, many reasons. But one of them is that because they destroyed the original keys after the, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so the whole process of Cult being launched, uh, they went through Solid Proof, which is out of Germany. They're a big crypto auditing and uh, like testing company. And they did an audit, it was mul multiple parts because they like found issues, went back and fixed them, get mm -hmm. audited again, blah, blah, blah. Launch it, uh, it got a gold status on their thing uh, so it's got like a, I think in perfect score, or maybe it was 99 out of 100. Um, there's there's been other audits since, and that was uh, yeah the the audit of the code, and they also KYC the development team, and though Mr. Omodulus, the the lead developer is private as Mr. Omodulus, 
then there's a lot of rumors about who he is, or they are, or it is, or whatever she is, they is, what <laughs> you know, like, could be an alien, who knows, could be an AI, just like Satoshi Nakamoto, you don't, we don't actually know, but there's people who know, in this case, um, including Solid Proof, and they said, I would assume they must have gotten permission from Mr. O to say this, because they said in a tweet, they're like, oh, wow, we were surprised when doing our KYC audit for Call It Dow that the main lead developer was already a super high profile crypto developer. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, people already thought that it might be this person or that person. So anyway, the contract was audited. Then the team was KYC, just in case. The keys to the contract were renounced. And the keys to the liquidity pool as well, I believe. No, just the contract. The liquidity pool, though, is locked for 265 years, 263 or less. It's been two years since it started. And then uh, the contract is, yeah, totally uneditable. So... In, can't change the blockchain. Yeah, you can't change the code for cult ever. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else, Revolt to Earn, the Rug Game, the Modulus blockchain, all the different NFT series, cult, DAO, uh, cult Punk NFTs, the Cult DAO Art NFTs, the Revolt NFTs, all of these things are just things that are all that. in the ecosystem <laughs> building alongside cult. Cult itself can't be changed. And we saw this work out beautifully in the fall when uh, Zero X Block <clears throat> got exploited. I was just going to ask you yeah. about that. So the, the Zero X great. Block was a, a token deployer, and it was used to launch cult among a bunch of other tokens. And so somebody somehow exploited it, and they got the keys to tokens, and they rug pulled a whole bunch of tokens because they got access to the liquidity pools. But they couldn't do anything to cult because they couldn't screw with the contract, and they couldn't take anything out of the liquidity the pool. The one token <laughs> that didn't get messed with on a hack. And I was going to bring that up and ask you to explain it, because when you're thinking about like investing in something like a project, like, like anything in crypto space, you, you, know, you, you want security in terms of you want to know you're investing in something that has likelihood to succeed, and you got to do your research to figure that out. But that's why in, you know, this has all of that. But then the second part of it is, is this a secure ecosystem and platform for me to keep my money in? Like, i.e., is this going to be easy to get hacked or people like somehow scam me in this ecosystem? And that right there is solid evidence to show you that it also has both sides of that coin protected. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that's a really, a really good point as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, the only, the biggest risks, <laughs> not financial advice. Uh, financial fun. Not advice. We're just having fun. For, for entertainment only. <laughs> for entertainment. Uh, I feel like the biggest risks that I see people suffering to with cult uh, is uh, assuming that they're not just doing the like buy the top, sell the bottom thing mm -hmm. that people sometimes do when they're new to markets. But assuming they, they're doing it right is they'll pay attention to the cult DAO members and d jive into other tokens that those people get excited about or like tokens that the, the DAO is investing in, they'll invest in too, and often at like a later time than the DAO gets in. And it's like, they end up doing, like the DAO, a venture capital firm shoots for 10% success on average is the thing. But you're gonna have one, one out of 10 is going to 100X or 500X for you. And so that's kind of the same thing that we're shooting for with Golf DAO, right? Yep. It's, it, it, that's, it's not about every project working out, hopefully, you know, and we want, we want good rates of, you know, success. We want better and better rates of success as we go. We should be learning and doing better and better. We should have more and more little groups that are doing their own, like, decentralized due diligence teams. Mm -hmm. Like, think about that. That's the whole thing. There's a, let's say there's a proposal being talked about, right, mm -hmm. and, or even just being brought up. Anybody in the community could do their own due diligence, put together a report in video or audio, it can be a, you know, a digital voice, it could be a written thing, whatever, put it forward to the community, hey, yo, here's my due diligence on right. that. I think it's pretty solid, let's move forward, I'm gonna vote yes if it comes up. Mm -hmm. And then file a revolt proposal for like 0.1 Ethereum or whatever to get paid for the hours, uh, you know, however, but it depends on the person and how much time they spent and all that, but like to get paid out for doing that work for the DAO. Yeah, I think that's one of the beauties of it too, is it sort of has this like implication of organic advertising from the community. 
rule yeah, number one of cult. Because there's incentive. Yep. Yeah, we'll yep. tell them. Yep. Rule number one of cult is talk about cult. You Opposite know? of Fight Club. Opposite of Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, to make another point, too, uh, you know, when you're looking at investing in crypto, there's a lot of things you can invest in, like some of the top ones and have some security, but it's not necessarily as lucrative yeah. as some of the other smaller ones. As, and some people would refer to these as like penny stocks or sub penny stocks in other situations. Uh, coal is in that realm. It's, it's fractions of a fractions of a penny, right? Um, so it's a great time to get in. It's just, you know, there's, there's not as much money into it yet, but as things get burnt, I mean, even it seems like there's just so many things pointing at success with it that it makes it, it makes no sense to not at least grab some and then stake it. Not financial advice. Not financial advice though. <laughs> at all. Um, um, but but as but as this I moves, but, I don't have any tokens that aren't cult except for rewards that I'm earning from stuff. So right. like I have pre-search tokens cuz I'm always searching on <clears throat> research. So I'm always earning some. Right. But that, like in terms of bags of stuff that I'm holding, I have cult. I have cult. I have cult punks NFTs, yep. and I have some Ethereum for exchanging between those things. We still have a few things to unpack here, but yeah. as we move forward with this, I just want to also mention, just in case you guys didn't know, currently cult is a token on Ethereum, correct? Yep. ERC20. And yep. they are developing their own blockchain known as Modulus. Can you please explain Modulus a little bit? Yeah, yeah. And I would say, not just currently, right? Like, cult will always be an ERC20 token. That's where the contract okay. is based. The the base, the contract for the DAO itself will be an Ethereum uh, contract. But yeah, you'll be able to bridge your cult over to Modulus, which is a layer two. So it's built on top of Ethereum. So here's the Ethereum blockchain. A lot of Ethereum, what it is, is actually these layer twos built on top of it. And this is gonna be one of those layer twos. Coolest things about Modulus to me are one, they're going to be building in a lot of privacy features as it goes. It's already it's what's called a zk rollup, a zero knowledge rollup blockchain, which is a very new tech. There's only a couple of these that are even in like testing, much less functioning at the moment. So we're going to be a early movers in this realm as well. But the coolest thing it, to me is Modulus is an internal combustion engine. Mm. Most blockchains, when you pay fees, they're, you're paying for gas, right? And then your gas is going to the person who's mining, the, to the computers over there, right? Let's say it's on Bitcoin. You're paying fees to those people for, in your miner fees. And every 10 minutes when a block is mined, they're getting rewards. Not necessarily that miner every 10 minutes, but, you know, the pool. On Modulus, the fees that are getting paid are in cult. So as holders of the cult token, that's pretty great, right? Like obviously mm -hmm. huge demand now, there's utility. Every app on Modulus is added utility for the cult token. Boom. The fees are burnt. The gas fees on Modulus are burnt. That's which the big thing there. doesn't happen on most any chain of any kind. And it's actually really similar because I remember when uh, Binance was really young that you actually had to pay your fees in Binance coin. Very similar, but this one, it burns those fees. Yeah. It's not, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you think about that, I mean, because back then, you know, Binance coin was like between two and four dollars a piece. And I think what last bull run, it was like 500 something yeah, a piece. Plus, like, I, think, yeah. I mean, you know, there's just little correlations like that you can compare to historically with similar models, but Ooh. not quite as good as this one. Just yeah. another really fine gold point there. Yeah. Uh, but as, as we move forward with this, uh, so Modulus is not out yet. Yeah. But you know, well, you, the test net is. The test net's out. Yeah, okay. you can go to modulusek.io and see all the information about Modulus, the the projects that are building on it, their websites and social medias and stuff. I, um, I think it's important to go ahead. The, the 0 0.9 test yeah. net of the Modulus blockchain. So you could install it on your MetaMask wallet or whatever. Don't do this if you're not a crypto expert, this, although it isn't, you're not using real money, but it's easy to get screwed up if you start trying to do this stuff and you don't know what you're doing. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can play with it now. And the second version of the testnet is supposed to be dropping this quarter. Right. Uh, and we just got updated a couple of weeks ago with the, with that date. So real quick, I, I think one of the more interesting aspects of this whole situation with coal is the way it's coming out is very unlike anything else. Because, you know, a lot of like things that are smaller projects like this, they're really trying to hype it. That is not the case that uh, Mr. O, right? I wanted to ask you about how he's like releasing information and stuff. 
but it's just really interesting because it's actually finally giving like people like us that are trying to, I, I would like to think that our, our, our efforts are if you're creating more synergy and you know uh better systems of money and governance and you know everything related to that with humanity and the earth with with uh the things that we support and the things that we're creating and i feel like this project falls in line with a lot of that it, where everything's at with it right now um but i kind of lost my train of thought there i'll apologize <laughs> but with with modulus uh when, uh and mr o uh he, he's not really trying to hype this like right, right off break that's not even a thing like, but he does drop information. Can you explain a little bit about that real, really quick? Yeah, it, as with the projects that have been dropped so far with Revolt and Cult Doubt, like Mr. Omodulus is, and, and his team, the team, are, are much better at giving really vague updates, like in terms of timing and stuff. Just like, here's what we're working on now. We're not done yet. We'll let you know. Here's what we're working on now. We're not done yet. We'll let you know. Kind of updates. And then being like, all right, here's, you know, the test nets. Just okay, out of boom, the blue. here's here's the second version no of the testnet. And then it'll be like it'll be quiet for when once the second version of the test net's out, it's just a matter of time. And then there'll be a quiet period and people will start to FUD cult and they'll be like, Modulus is fake, it's not gonna happen. And then boom, the main net will go live. Just like that. It'll just go live. Yeah, it's gonna and, be an exciting day. Yeah, instead of the like we're 90 days from launch, and then right. using that to try to hype for 90 days. Anti-galactic, not happening. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the buy the rumor, it's sell so the news. Better. Buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. Instead, cult goes into big things happening with like a pretty flat chart usually, which looks great for traders and people like that that want to yeah. feel early. Everybody that, wants to feel early. Not trying to like, you know, uh, promise things that can't be that shouldn't be promised. You know what I mean? It's like here's what we're working on. This is happening, but the reality is what is already here. Yeah, that's the reality. But then that reality comes of the next thing and it's like, there it is. You know what I mean? It's not like this, I love that about it. I love how it's not just like trying to project things into the, really with these kind of things, you wanna do them right and take your time. So you're putting a date on it, you know, that could cause problems and uh, unnecessary problems to come up with the actual thing you're creating. So another great uh, method of thinking with the, um, you know, just the development team and how they're executing this whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, you know, Kind of evident in the way the ecosystem is built too and the way the proposals are and all that as well it's very like let's take our time and talk about it and like make it fair and at least provide some sort of mechanisms that make it more fair than anything we've done yeah great awesome it's not just a money grab people aren't just in this making money they're renouncing the keys anyway yeah so locking away <laughs> millions of dollars in the liquidity pool for two and a half centuries yeah who awesome. does that you know, awesome. like go look at the market People cap. Like care. Go look at like. Cult now on Coin Market Cap or Dex Tools or Coin Gecko, whatever. Go look it up. Cult is the ticker. C U L T. Go look it up. Market cap currently like eleven million, a little less than eleven million. Look how much liquidity is in that liquidity pool. Three million plus. Nobody else has that. That's which which is also it, it makes the Moon Boys in the the number go up crowd not like cult so much sometimes because big money can come in and it doesn't move the chart as much because mm -hmm. we have so much liquidity but that also means we never end up in those big spiky pump and dumps we never end up with people losing out because the liquidity is all dried up right yeah it's uh yeah not financial advice <laughs> no, don't try this at home kids yeah uh but yeah, you're uh, ready to lose everything that you put into any oh, investment it, ever period. i mean that's definitely or into that's your just, pocket or into that's your just wallet. great advice in general yeah don't be money putting your don't be putting your life anyways. stake on something that's you know we, as, as solid as anything is you can't predict the future on especially with stuff like investment unless you can but you can develop oracle eyes that uh, see better and better as you go through these experiences and doing your research and watching videos like this yeah. and actually taking the time to figure it out before everyone else does and you'll make more money, theoretically. Exactly. Theoretically. That's the thing. Even, project, <laughs> even projects that die off oftentimes have giant run-ups and they do, not, not to compare cult to those, but it's like it's easy to make money if you're just early in things and you just pay attention to simple indicators in the charts and if the teams are solid and things like that. Yeah, and I think that I and, feel like the biggest difference yeah. with this as an investment for me personally, if you know, I was to invest, is that in things that we've like been kind of hyped about in the past, things like smart cash, things like like uh, uh, you know, even Splinterlands, which was we did really well for a while and it may and may return, who knows, it's still a really great blockchain game. Uh, but they, it was still a lot of like 
hoping in things in those even even though like things seemed like there were still question marks in areas and with this one i feel like I, the, the question marks that come up get answered it's not like i still am wondering what the fuck's going to happen with that mm -hmm. you know what i mean i think that's the biggest difference yeah. with this one and that's why i feel so strongly that it's you know it's something special regardless of the price of anything i think that the technology and the governance and the community being developed here is special sure. and that's what's important everything else is a bonus but uh, on that note let's let's move into these last few points that we haven't covered yet um i think another thing people are probably wondering a lot is what is the biggest difference between cult and revolt in the ecosystems and how are the tokens related and how they interface Oof. um <laughs> revolt is on polygon so it's cheaper fees and all that sort of stuff revolt does not have renounced keys and everything like that it was part of the zero x block hack it did oh, get hacked interesting so they did okay. a whole migration to get everybody a, you know instead of trying to bring back that token where the person already has control of them cool we just did a, a shift uh migration you can find it on the medium page for Cold mm. now um it's even more fractions of a fraction of a penny it's like less than a million dollar market cap uh it's smaller proposals for the DAO. So call it DAO proposals are 13 Ethereum. Can't be less than that. Yeah. It has to be the, I mean, that you can sit, but, but I want to push for more proposals right. that send excess just right back to the treasury. Mm -hmm. Why not? Oh, we only need five Ethereum for this thing. Let's not not do a proposal. Let's right. just do the proposal and send the other eight back to the treasury. Yeah, that, that could be part really of the simple. proposal too, yeah. yeah. And then our burn to investment ratio is way better too because we're burning 2.5, investing five, boom. Anyway, on Revolt, <laughs> on cool, Revolt man. DAO, yeah, on Revolt DAO, it's more for people individually doing promo work, uh, pushing cult DAO, just fighting for revolution. If you read the uh, the rules of Revolt, the PDF, it's like 31 pages, the PDF that goes with Revolt DAO, it breaks down so, and it says stuff like, you know, if people are fighting against their totalitarian government and they need the crypto money to fund shit, they should use Revolt DAO for that. Yeah. As well as if people are talking about cult now, or if people are, if you're out getting people to sign up for Monero, that seems like an act of revolt to me. If you're, you know, it, and it's, it's based on the voters. And uh, revolt is kind of the inverse of cult now. Anybody with a little bit staked can put a, up a proposal. And then only the cult manders, which is a rotating group that you can opt into once you have a certain amount, I think it's like $200 worth, uh, only the cult manders can actually vote. But yeah, so both systems have these like interesting dual part democratic systems. And for an experimental government governance like that, I think it's great to have a side by side comparison as we move forward with it to really yeah. see like, yeah, I mean, because they, theoretically they could both work well for different yeah. reasons, like you know yeah. what I mean. And they support each other. You know, mm -hmm. cults doing its thing, and then revolt's purpose is to live next to it basically. And every revolt proposal pays out the stakers. It pays out the the person who's getting the proposal money. It burns revolt and it buys cult and burns it. You get yeah, it's a whole thing. It's super. There's a reason the the cult down manifesto is 12 pages. The rules for revolt is like 31 pages. Speaking it's of more that, complex, really. Speaking of that, the, there was the what was it called again? The three things. The three tenants. The three tenants. Can you yeah. explain that? So for any proposal, for any investment the cult down is gonna make, uh, there's three tenants. And it has to clear at least two of them, and that's. Uh, fighting for or, or pushing you know creating more decentralization fighting against uh you know explaining the issues with centralization and then for a noble cause uh which there's there's wiggle room there for the community to decide but in the manifesto in the q a it's like well what describes a noble cause in terms of investment it says human liberation is the noblest of causes or some wording like that but it says human liberation is our framework for what a noble cause is so that's that's why I love Call Dow because there's lots of cool cryptos. There's lots of cryptos that you're gonna make a bunch of money on. Any crypto, if you're early, you're probably gonna make some good money. You know, as long as it doesn't just die off. Uh, but not many have this kind of math. Not many have this kind of community, and those two often don't overlap at all. You think about like Dogecoin printing like billions and billions well, of tokens let's every, not day. Get into that every day. Every right day, it's now. ridiculous. <laughs> um, but it's got so it's got the math. It's got the community. Uh, but then it's actually like it is very strictly specifically like implicitly agorist anarchist cypherpunk libertarian like whatever it's pushing for 
decentralization and liberation by its coat, like by its nature, by its white paper. And that, that's, that yeah. feels, and then the people, I've been in the, you know, I, I got into this a year ago now, like literally this week a year ago. Um, and yeah, the people in the Telegram group, the people on t Twitter, the people in Discord, uh, you know, there's lots of really great conversation, people learning, people growing, diving more into their health and stuff, like, but so many of them, like very clearly, yeah, actual freedom fighting people, uh, freedom loving people, and yeah, it feels good to have that in a coin, which not many have besides yeah, like Monero, because it's it's the the coin of all of the the black market folks, the black and gray, the agorist, the agorist minded, um, or just people that want to keep their bank record, their private financial records private. Yeah, I mean, like until this point, it's like do. You, do you have, uh, have any, has anyone in the past that has a has had a bank account before crypto existed uh, been cool with their bank records being public? Right. That's what I always ask when people ask about that. It's like no, and no ever. But but it's like for some reason those same people it seems it seems like for the most of the time have an issue with like people like having something like a privacy coin here. It's like, dude, what are you serious? Like right. <laughs> so. Because, and that's honestly, because a lot of that stuff is, and just like crypto in general was originally associated with things that, you know, have a, a, a bad stigma, you know, attached to them, like, you know, uh, black market type of things. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, last couple of things here that I can think of anyway, um, we talked about how the ecosystem works, the investment potential, mm -hmm. all the burning, the, you know, the decentralized um, emphasis uh, promotional emphasis. I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff that make this a great ecosystem. Yeah. Um, but we ha what we haven't gotten into is the NFT side. Let's talk a little bit about the punks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's crazy. I, I don't usually like it's them. It's not these even are cool. just the punks too, because there's already. Man, I forgot. I, you, don't, you don't even have any of these yet. I don't think. Oh yeah. So so the cult what punks. What he's referring to the cult punks NFTs. Mm -hmm. Are a series launched by the Soup C team, which is Artorius, one of the lead devs for Cult, and his team uh, building Soup C, which is their like kind of clone of OpenSea. It's the NFT marketplace for Modulus when Modulus launches. They did kind of a, a crowdfunding NFT sale to to raise money and get people in as stakers in Soup C. So they launched the Cult Punks NFTs. There was a limited time window to mint them only 2354 i think got minted and those 2400 let's say split between them 50 percent of all fees on the soup c marketplace forever for as long as that run obviously not forever forever because you know it's not like we're gonna have blockchains forever forever but maybe that'd be weird um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so and then they also have you know they can't say for sure, for sure, but there will be probably free whitelist stuff, free airdrops, free mintings of various other kinds, especially because it is such a limited pool. But there's also, there's like the cult DAO art NFTs. And I'll put some links, we can, you know, uh, we can put the links to these things down below so you don't have to just look for them. But they're ones that are also, they're already out. I forget who it was in the community that made them, the name's right on the tip of my tongue, but for each one of those that you have, you earn a little bit of passive call income every day too. Yeah, Bingo. so there's all sorts of ways. So think about that, right? The token supply is ever decreasing. You earn rewards for staking your cult. You earn cult rewards for the cult DAO art NFTs. You earn cult rewards for the punks once Modulus launches. You, huh. So you can have an ever-growing supply of something that has an ever-decreasing supply. <laughs> and That's the biggest yeah, point, I think. And like, it's currently it's like that's it, so man. minuscule, right? The market cap for Call <laughs> Dow is like 10 to $11 million. It's less than $11 million, right? It's under, or it's right around, I haven't looked yet today to see the number for, for where its placement is, but it usually hovers right around number 1,000 on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. Still That's how far down the list it is, right? I mean, Kenny, I think that's probably maybe the most important point I don't know, I mean, I don't know what else to say, right? Like, 
Uh, but even yeah, if it wasn't a great that, project, it would be a pretty solid investment just because it's all locked up and everything. Man, that's, but it's also a great project that, with the right people getting into it, especially, that's why we really want to focus on people that feel aligned with the principles. Like, if any of this sounds cool, go read the manifesto. Right. Right. Uh, Cultdow.io slash manifesto, and there it is. And uh, you know, it's it's simple. It's like mostly pretty simple words. There's a one page of this solid tokenomics, but most of it's pretty plain text. And it really lays out the, the goal and the purpose and the apolitical nature and the anti-government nature and the anti-bank nature and just, yeah, it's pretty great. Just more for the people. That's what we need. Yep. More for the people. Yep. This yep. is a lot more for the people, I feel like, on this one. Yeah. Yeah. My boy yeah. Kenny here doesn't management. support, like, a whole lot of stuff these days, but he's really excited about this one. And if you got Kenny That's on true. your team, That's you true. know something about that shit. So if you don't know, now you know. Uh, I, you know, great conclusion there. I just want to make one more point about the uh, the punks in particular. Usually, I, I mean, all those stupid fucking eight sixteen bit images that they put on all these blockchains, they literally do nothing. It's just people sell them for ass tons of money because maybe they're limited, whatever. These actually earn you passive income. Also, like similar to the ones on Solana, they're also really good. The Lucid punks, you know, you can get these. They're limited. Once they're gone, they're gone, and you know their resale values will more than likely increase, but also they're gonna pay themselves back. Yep. And once they're paid back, they're completely in the green, so then you can do what you want. If the price spikes on, sell them if you want, or just keep earning that money as the yep. price of that particular ecosystem's coin keeps yep. increasing over the years. So I would say that with something like this, man, it's, it's more one of those like, gets, you know, it's, it's a longer term thing, but we should, I, I would anticipate we're gonna see some, some uh, fun spikes here in the near future as well. <laughs> Oh yeah, or yeah. it's not far off. We didn't even we didn't even really talk about like the status of the treasury of cult or the status of the the investments or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So cult has a bunch of NFTs in this thing called the Antara movie, mm -hmm. which is about this like historical guy. They're filming on location in the Middle East. This is a multi million dollar movie. We've got some of their early release seed funding staker NFTs. They're also launching a game to go with it. It's huge. It's gonna be huge. Uh, we've got Metis. <laughs> I forget what Metis is, but it's up a bunch. It's a coin that's been pumping like crazy. Um, this this Messer M87 that's been pumping like crazy. People Dow, you know, like Cold Dow has dozens of projects that's currently invested in that are all going to be paying back. We didn't talk about this part either, so we're just going to keep going because it works for a second. Uh, when a proposal pays back, when we get investments back to the Dow what happens, right? Because it's a venture capital fund, you're making money, at least hopefully, sometimes. So let's that, say, that would be the goal. let's say Wolfwork is one that we've just been getting back. We got a monthly dividend for 12 months. So every month, boom, this amount of Wolfwork comes available. Each proposal has its own breakdown. So some of them say like sold right away. Some of them say sold over the course of the next week. Some say, you know, we, we could say it, whatever we want it to say. We could say like, oh, as we unlock these, we're not going to sell any of it because we think it's gonna spike like crazy, or we're gonna sell half and hold on to half, or whatever it is. But anything that gets sold, anytime profits are taken, anytime divestments actually happen, it's used, it's, so you take that coin, sell it on the market, use that to buy Ethereum on the, or sorry, to buy Cult on the Ethereum market, and just Uniswap their token away, Uniswap into Cult, which more liquid, there's more volume happening on Cult, more price action happening on cult, more taxes being paid on cult. And then that, that uh, let's say, you know, say it's $10,000 that we just got back from some investment. 5,000 of that is gonna be burnt instantly. The other 5,000 is distributed amongst all the stakers. Like you get staking, again, you're getting staking rewards in a deflationary token. Usually your staking rewards are your token being watered down and you feeling good that you're keeping right. up with inflation. That's the important thing I think to understand with that whole explanation is that if you're not familiar with that kind of thing, when, when, when money is burnt, okay, and not more is being created, what ends up happening is that every bit of money that's left that everybody has ends up becoming worth more more and more just and more. because of that alone yeah. not counting any other factors yeah. as that goes throughout time it increases in volume more and more and more the thing with something like the US dollar as an example uh, sure they burn cash every year yeah and now they're making at least like four to five times as much uh, of that printing compared to the amount they're burning yeah. and that's where you see inflation whereas this our this is this particular ecosystem burning no more being made ever
so yeah, you can see how that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> I mean, just think about like, you know, other things that have happened that were in ecosystems that were kind of a joke, like Dogecoin. I mean, just took somebody getting up there that has a big following and saying some stuff. Next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. Yep. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. we actually have something here that's a real good case study example of something that could be a better ecosystem for, and really just a better governance in general for how we do things like this moving forward in our world. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, there yep. we go. There that's it cold is. Now. Cold Dow. Join the cult. <laughs> Join the cult. Join the cult. If you didn't know, oh, so I'm Elemental. I'm a hip-hop artist. I'm an MC, producer, sound engineer out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, you can find me on most of the things. I don't like social media that much, but I advertise our stuff on Instagram. It's E-L-A mental, like English language arts, MC language attenuated, eternal life abundant. It's not spelled E-L-E. -E. Part of a hip-hop group called Kingdom Merlin. There's a lot of us. We have a website, one of the first dot hip hop addresses kin of merlin dot hip hop you type in kin of merlin on google or whatever or pre-search if you're smart and that's another thing earn crypto for just searching for stuff use pre-search instead of google uh then uh yeah you can uh you can find me that way too on the website with along with the rest of our dope artists that are part of our crew so yeah call it dow.io for the cult it's got all the links there for everything else that you need uh, yeah, you can check my channel for the videos that I've already made about it. I dropped some other stuff, different audits and everything. Power and Tano on all the places. Much love. Have a beautiful day. Peace out. Hope we helped. <laughs>